Hi everyone, so this video is to give a short demonstration of the quint pitch uh, Rucker's harpsichord uh, in comparison to a full-size uh, Flemish harpsichord. As you may have seen in the previous video, this little green harpsichord um, is a quint pitch Rucker's that was based on the original uh, that was built by Andreas the Elder in 1627. It's currently exhibited in a museum in the Netherlands and is the only one of its kind that we know of. Um, I first learned about this instrument from uh, Grant O'Brien's book, Rucker's A Harpsichord in Virginal Building Tradition. And uh, like a lot of other people, I'm sure, who, who first saw the instrument uh, in that book, I wondered, what does that sound like? Uh, does it sound like a four-foot choir, maybe? Um, you know, who knows? And I'd always been curious about it, and just recently, uh, over the summer, by an unbelievably fortunate stroke of good luck, this instrument came up for sale. Uh, the original owner for whom it was built by Thomas Schuhl in 1990 was downsizing and they decided to part ways with it. And I was uh, blessed and fortunate enough to be able to get it. Uh, it was in immaculate condition, playing condition when I got it. Um, was built by a professional harpsichord maker. Um, no mechanical structural problems whatsoever. This is the, I think, the second instrument that I have gotten in the last two years that all I've had to do is tune it and play it. No regulation, no, no anything. Didn't even have to replace any plectra. It was in great shape, and it's a beautiful instrument. Um, it's decorated similar to the original. It, it does have the, the traditional Flemish soundboard uh, decoration has the Flemish papers, uh, Latin mottos, it has uh, the ash grain papers on the lid. The one thing what is interesting is this motto, Gloria Dei, uh, does not mean glory to God, that would be Gloria Deo, but this means the glory of God, which I, I think is interesting because I haven't seen that on, on any other instrument. It has the marbled uh, exterior case. The original, I think, is just a plain olive green, but the, the stand on the original is much nicer than this one. This one is a much uh, simpler trestle stand. But uh, what's interesting is it is pitched a fourth higher than what we would call normal pitch. So when we play the key A, we actually get the corresponding pitch D. Now this instrument is tuned to the pitch of A415, but to get that you have to play the key E. So that's 415 there, or, or, or thereabouts, because it has been a, about a week since I've tuned this. But when we play the key A, we actually get the pitch D, which is uh, about 553 hertz. So it has a unison, it has an octave, which I have not tuned, and then it has a buff stop. And to give a comparison of the way it sounds, uh, compared with a harpsichorded modern pitch. This is a Zuckerman Concert Flemish single, uh, which is a very fine instrument, though it is not based on any exact uh, historic examples. Uh, it still is uh, inspired by the Flemish instruments. It has a similar uh, scaling, similar plucking points. That's right, Bird. And um, gives a, a, a decidedly Flemish sound, and so I'm going to demonstrate the back, or excuse me, the front eight-foot choir uh, on this instrument, uh, play a few bars of the Kuprin that I played on the, uh, the quint pitch, and then I'll play it again on the uh, smaller one. So this one is tuned to A406. It's not quite at 440 because I've just put the wire on this instrument uh, within the last you know, six or eight weeks. So I'm giving it time to, to acclimate to this instrument before I bring it up fully to, to, to 415. <laughs> So now that same 
uh, excerpt played on the quint pitch instrument. And remember, this was also played in a, a previous video uh, where the buff stop was demonstrated. So there you have it. Uh, getting ready to put this one back in its shipping crate and uh, deliver it to uh, a harpsichord maker who I believe is going to, you know, study it, look it over, and maybe make a drawing of it. Uh, they themselves have a quint pitch instrument, uh, a virginal. So very, very compact, 48 inches long. Uh, the keyboard is the same size as the same octave span, I should say, as the other keyboards, although the key levers are a bit shorter. These appear to be some type of burl wood, and this is sapili. Um, what's surprising to me was I was, I, I was amazed at how smooth the action is and how responsive. My initial thoughts were that the key levers were going to be very short and that I was going to have to fight to play uh, the instrument, but I, I didn't. Um, I, I have another instrument, or had another instrument, another video of that instrument. It was a Dolmich uh, jet spinet, very compact, very small. And that one had key levers that were so short and they were uh, very heavily counterbalanced with lead weights to the point where it was almost difficult to play ornaments. I had to really go in and tweak the, the height of the jacks and the voicing and get it just right to be able to play ornaments. But this one you don't. It, the, the key uh, board is very, very light and swift and responsive and it feels no different uh, than the larger instrument. And by the way, this one here is a Zuckerman uh, Flemish Mark III, I believe, that does not play. It has no strings and the action has been removed. So um, yeah, tuned a fourth above what we would call normal pitch. We know that the Rutgers family produced virginals in all different sizes and different uh, tunings, uh, sometimes a third, a fourth, a fifth, and of course an octave higher uh, than what would be considered normal pitch. And it's interesting because many Renaissance instruments, of course the viols and the recorders, but also sagbits and cornets and schwams and rackets, they were... Uh, made at many different pitches, and we know that those instruments would play together in consort. Uh, William Byrd wrote beautiful music uh, for consorts of viols, but um, I know of no historic evidence that suggests that harpsichords of different sizes and shapes were played in consort with one another, with the exception of, you know, the mother and child virginal, which would be no different than an eight-foot and four-foot choir uh, on, on a harpsichord. So, who knows? Uh, what new evidence will come to light? Maybe these these instruments were more common uh, than we may we may know right now, and maybe they were played in concert with one another. But I I I don't know of of anything like that. Maybe somebody else does, and they can teach me something new. Uh, wouldn't be the first time that's happened. So, <laughs> but uh, no, it's a beautiful instrument. I'm I'm very happy to have it. Uh, it is a novelty. It, it, it certainly is not what one would consider a typical harpsichord. Uh, to play with other instruments, of course, one would have to alter uh, the fingering and would have to transpose on the keyboard, excuse me. <clears throat> uh, O'Brien, in his book, says that the original at some point had its key levers rearranged so that the low key, which is pitch C, but would have been the key lever E, because of the short octave tuning, uh, was, was made into an A, and that the high C was actually made into an F. So it can play with other instruments. But uh, case is gorgeous. Soundboard is, is painted using uh, the same designs as the Zuckerman Flemish soundboard painting kit, which is what's on the large concert Flemish single. So uh, all in all, lovely little instrument. What's interesting is that the stand is actually lower, uh, shorter, so who knows? Uh, definitely not a child's instrument, though. If it would be a, a child's instrument, then it probably would have had a smaller keyboard. So, uh, But anybody who wants to play it may do so uh, at their convenience. Just go ahead and 
shoot me a message and we can make it happen. Getting ready to put this one into its crate now. So take care. Thanks for watching the video.